Hello, today's episode of Beer Canics Garage. We get all electric with this uh, brand new 2021 MG ZS EV. Cool. So um, I'm not uh, a massive SUV fan, but um, I think this is absolutely stunning. This is my partner's car, it's a lease vehicle, but um, she's let me take it out so we can do a review on it. So it's literally about two months old. Um, and it's, it's gorgeous, drives really nice, but uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So the uh, being an electric vehicle, the charging port is actually at the front here. You just, with everything unlocked, you press the MG badge. Lift it up, and then you've got the charging port just in here. So you uh, pull this little rubber cover off, and you plug it in. To actually get it to charge, you have to then lock the car, and it actually locks the plug in place as well, so no one can take it. Because the um, the electric leads yeah, that uh, you have to get for this car, they're about 120 grid uh, for the leads, so obviously people will, will nick them. But um, this all locks it into place. And you can charge it in the rain as well, and you're not going to electrocute yourself. According to the uh, the vendors. I think the headlights actually look quite sexy on this. Um, these are because uh, this is the the top of the range model, the exclusive. It has the um, auto control on the headlights, so if it gets dark, they will come on automatically. Um, it has running lights as well. But um, so yeah, if you if you go to an area where there's no street lights, the full beams will come on automatically, and it detects as soon as a uh, a car comes around the corner. Um, the lights will instantly dip. The same as if um, you catch up to someone, uh, even from the rear, the rear lights, it will detect those and dip the full beams as well. It comes with Michelin tyres as a standard. Um, these alloys I think are lovely. They're even better when they're not filthy dirty, but um, they're pretty sexy. Uh, brake discs front and rear. Two lovely brake discs. Um, the mirrors are uh, the radar mirrors with the, um, I forget what we call it now, the uh, lane changing detection so um, if I wanted to change lanes and someone's undercutting me this would flash when they're in your blind spot so well, it's the same on the other side so if you um, was going to pull out into the next lane um, it would detect that there's a car there so uh, it just flashes to tell you that you can't that there's a car in your blind spot so the windows are quite a nice size um, get plenty of light on the inside You've got a small little um, window at the back here which uh, I don't think does a lot for the light inside but the uh, the lines of the car I think that looks really nice. Makes it look quite sporty. So if you have a look as well, the um, uh, the lines of the panel. I just again, I think that's a really nice, nice look. So bulges out, comes out a bit with the rear, like a nice big rear. But yeah, just overall the lines of the car, I just think it looks really, really nice. A, that's quite a sexy SUV. And speaking of the rear, there we are. Also filthy dirty, but again, it's not a, it's not an ugly car from the back either. Obviously, the absolute lack of an exhaust. <laughs> I just say, ah, oh, my exhaust fell off. Yeah, you can see your reversing sensors, which in the last car I had decided not to work. So the last car I had, my missus car. Right then, so we have a look at the boot. So 470 litres. It's quite a nice size boot. It goes back quite deep. There's a ton of crap in here already. Again, it's a family car. There you go. As you can see, it's quite a, quite a nice size. You've got the um, spare tyre under here as well. cargo net and you also it opens out sort of here and on the other side for your golf cart your golf um, clubs the golf cart. this is like a golf car because it's electric that's yeah, here decent sized boots um, all the seats on the back also lie forward if you've got large items to put in there but yeah it is nice right let's open up the bonnet and have a look at the uh, well I say the engine I've not actually opened this yet you're quite creepy, so where's the catch? I'm going to catch here somewhere. Is that it? Oh, yep, nice one. Oh, look at that. 
So is it a V6, V8 or what? <laughs> it's uh, well, again, it's a golf cart engine. <laughs> that's that's weird. But she's still got a standard looking battery. Yeah, that's your that's the electric motor. Okay, so you've still got coolant. Um, the coolant doesn't actually have anything really to do with the, the heating. The heating is actually off of the main battery. But um, I was looking at something the other day. Uh, electric motors, they have a much lower temperature range that they can work at. So uh, once you get to about sort of 60 degrees, um, electric motors then really struggle. So uh, they have to have quite a decent cooling system to keep those levels down. Oh, so much room to work in here. It's a really open bay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's really much to do. <laughs> right, so um, inside, I think it's actually got quite a nice quality feel to it. Uh, everything feels really sturdy. There's nothing that's that's flimsy. This is quite a hard kind of a uh, scratchy plastic, but you've got um, leather as well on the inside, actually on the door itself. Obviously, as a driver, you've got control of uh, all four mirrors. And again, you can lock the mirrors so the kids can't open it or can't close it if you want to really wind them up. Um, you've got your uh, central locking controls, which are quite good, so you can lock the doors. I mean, the doors automatically lock as you go anyway, but the amount of times I've pulled up to pick up one of the kids, and uh, obviously they can't open the doors because they lock as soon as you put away. <laughs> so you've got your controls there, um, you've got your headlight uh, headlight control there, so obviously you can change the, um, change the angle, and your wing mirror controls. And uh, if you have it in the, um, in the center position, when you press down, it folds the mirrors in. Which is quite cool, which I did by accident and then had to work out what I'd done to try and uh, open it back up again. Um, steering, wheel inter steering wheel interface is really cool on this. So you've got your, um, your controls obviously for your, uh, your entertainment system and also if you link it up to your Bluetooth phone, you, of course you can skip your tracks and everything. Um, there's no CD player in this as uh, I find you don't need a lot of brand new vehicles now. My, um, my, my work phone doesn't have one either. It's purely a uh, digital radio or you link it up to your phone. Um, so obviously, yeah, you can make phone calls and control your phone settings through here. You can ch change the source, so you can switch it from radio to Bluetooth, that kind of thing. Um, on this side, this takes you. These are the controls for your um, your main display in here. So if I turn it on, right. So you've got your main kind of uh, running control, but if you press these buttons here, I don't know if you can see. It goes through the other settings. So you've got a menu system here. So I've got the speed warning currently off. A few other bits that you can ask it for in the next services. So there's 30 and a half thousand miles. Um, yeah, you just got a few controls. Yeah, warning information, which is quite cool. Um, what else have we got here? So these, these are all your controls, obviously, for your, your climate control, your yeah, air recirculation. These are the um, heated seats. No, sorry, no, these are the directional controls for the for the, the blower. So obviously that's on the, the window. Press it again for the uh, window end, blowing on your legs. Oh, hang on. Just your legs, legs and face, just your face, that kind of thing. These are your um, heated seats for your toasty buns while you're driving. That's quite nice, but it does obviously drop your fuel range because that comes off of the main battery and not the, uh, like the leisure battery. So um, we did it before and I think when we both turned them on, we lost about four miles off the range. So um, it, again, it's good if you're doing a school run in the winter, but uh, you wouldn't want it on all the time if he's going on a long journey because it would sap your fuel range. Let's turn that off again. Okay, you've got controls here for, um, that's your driving mode. So uh, in standard mode, um, as you can see in there, we've got 139 miles. If I put it into economy mode, that goes up to 154. Or if I put it into sport mode, that goes down to 132. So um, it, the car actually drives fine in normal mode. We very rarely ever take it out of that. Uh, occasionally, if I'm, if I'm on my own, I'll put it up to sport mode, but it um, doesn't really make a lot of difference. This car's quite nippy as it is. And uh, economy mode, you can feel the difference. But um, obviously, again, if you're on a long, long drive, you want as much range as possible. So on a full charge, you only get about 143 miles out of this car. And that's, that's not a lot. 
and that's if you're not using lots of the other controls as well if you've got the heater on and the blower um your range comes down even more so uh, it's not a particularly long range the entertainment system is really cool um it's all, all touch screen so if you go into into here that's our radio so we're on uh, digital radio we've got obviously your absolute ratings and planet rock in there but you've got your regular fm and am as well and uh if you go into so if you go through the source take it to bluetooth actually i don't think my bluetooth is on my phone but you can you go through here basically to pair it to your phone get back out navigation settings that obviously takes you into your um your sat nav which is quite handy as well also comes up with the uh the speed limit of the road that you're on and uh, this is correct, whereas the display on here that tells you the speed limit for the road you're on is, is usually incorrect. Uh, which, and it then tells you off for speeding or for driving too slow. I've been on a 70 mile an hour dual carriageway and it thinks it's a 30 mile an hour road. And then it's telling me off. And I've been on a, a 40 mile an hour road and it thinks it's a 70. And then it's telling me off for driving too slow. <laughs> but it's correct on the sat nav, which is absolutely bizarre. So I think it needs a software update. But um, it's not anything that's really bothered us, so it's, it's not, been a, not been a concern. And obviously here's for your, uh, your Apple CarPlay or your Android CarPlay, depending on what phone you've got. But uh, yeah, it's quite a, quite a cool system. Nine out of ten times we listen to the radio, but occasionally we'll, uh, we'll link it up to our phones. Because uh, you can play through the music you've got stored, or you can, um, if someone in the car puts on YouTube or Spotify, then you can just stream it straight to the, um, straight to the entertainment system. You can't watch anything on here while you're driving, obviously, but you can listen to the music. Right, so storage space. You've got um, just a fairly small cubby hole. This is mostly where we put our keys. So I just literally plonk them in there because it's all, all keyless. But a uh, couple of, um, yeah, that's a, literally the button to start it. Well, it's actually started now. It's in run mode. So this is the equivalent of just having the engine on and it idling, which is mental. Uh, yeah, so a couple of drinks holders. Um, a little bit of space storage space up here you've got a like i said usb cable which goes through here and if you see underneath there's another little storage space that's also where we've got two usb plugs here and also your typical 12 volt adapter plug as well again no actual cigarette lighter but um and that is there. where you can store your sweet and sour mcdonald's sauce absolutely <laughs> we do like a uh, carpet nicks that's why the car's filthy um yeah glove box which is uh not not massive but it's okay does the trick and then if you, if you can see in the doors you've got um a fair amount of space there as well yeah you, you'll fit a big bottle here haven't you oh yeah yeah great big drinks bottle or yeah mcdonald's cheeseburger <laughs> <laughs> fits in there quite nicely <laughs> let's have a look in the back okay so this is in the standard riding position for both me and my partner um i'm five foot Eight and a half, five foot nine, and uh, well, this is plenty of plenty of space for me. Our eldest daughter is six foot one, and um, she's like all legs, but she's got more than enough leg room. She's quite comfy, and uh, more than enough headroom as well. So I think you'd have to be really tall for it to be be too small in the back. This is uh, I've not actually sat in the back before. This is quite nice. This panoramic roof is is awesome. And to go right, right. And it all opens up. It's not quite as good as a convertible, but um, that's that's quite a nice, quite a nice feature. So as, apart from your door bits here, you've also got um, some door bits here. a bit in the back of the seat, pockets. Yeah, little pockets. Um, you've also got space in the doors as well to put stuff. Yeah, we haven't even taken the covers off. <laughs> That's how new it is. Yeah, but it's literally like two months old. I uh, don't think this comes down. No, this is all, this whole part's one, one seat, which obviously can be laid forward, and then this one. So there's no armrest in the back. It's a 60 40, I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 60 40. But it's still, still nice. Got a decent sized parcel shelf. Yeah, but the kids really like it. I've uh, been in the back quite a few times. And yeah, had no complaints on the comfort. It's definitely nicer than the Skoda, which is my partner's previous car. 
Okay, so to start with, it's a keyless entry system. So um, we we'll just put our keys in the glove box here. And uh, you've just got a little button there. So you have to put your foot on the brake, pretty much like you would an auto, and press start. And that's that's literally it. It's ready to go. There's no no engine noise because there is no engine. Um, yeah, it's quite quite bizarre. So I don't know if you can see on there, but you've got your uh, it's currently in park. So you put your foot on the brake again as you would with an auto. You've got your dial. It's obviously reverse, neutral, and drive. So you turn it right, and that's now changed to a D for drive. And then literally you take your foot off the brake and drive it exactly as you would an automatic um, except the fact that it doesn't actually have a gearbox um, which is kind of weird so um, this dial on the right hand side here that's your power that, that basically tells you um, what power you're using um, and it looks it's like a rev rev counter as, as you're going in fact you can see it drop and I actually thought that meant that it did have a gearbox but it doesn't um, so as you can see up to 30% power you're in your efficiency zone um, up to then 90% is kind of uh, normal running and then uh, between 90 and 100% is your boost when it's uh, it really uses the juice though if you get it into boost mode and then below the, the 0% is where, it, uh, is where it says charge so as you uh, as you start to break um, it has regenerative braking so um, it then starts to, uh, to recharge your battery and you can see how much it's recharging by how much it dips and um, the same also happens when you come off the throttle you've got a system called KERS, which um, that also automatically regenerates uh, power as soon as you come off the throttle. And uh, it's one of the things I truly love about this car, um, because it feels like you're the same as driving a manual, um, which is brilliant, because that's always been one of my biggest gripes of driving an automatic, is the fact that as soon as you take your foot off the brake, off, off of the, um, the throttle, you don't get any engine braking. Um, it's almost like you're coasting in neutral. But this um, feels like driving a manual almost so as soon as you take the foot off the throttle you're starting to brake and um, I absolutely love that that feels far more natural to me than a regular automatic right we're just going to go for a little drive and uh, Jill's found a new spot so we're going to go and have a look so the, literally the car is in run mode so put it in a drive and off we go there is a little bit of engine, like a um, electric motor kind of whine, but you don't hear it unless the windows are open. So uh, again, we'll, we'll check out. Shill's got his decibel meter, so we'll do some noise level tests as well. The um, when we picked it up from the dealership, the uh, the guy said to us that basically you can. Um, for the most part, for your day-to-day -day driving, just forget that it's an electric car and just drive it as you would a normal car, just a regular automatic. Um, and actually, yeah, you, you get used to driving it and um, yeah, for the most part, it's just like driving a normal car. The, uh, the most, this basically just gets used for school runs and uh, carrying shopping and the odd little uh, drive in the evenings, that kind of thing. <laughs> the car you can hear is Jill's car, not this one. <laughs> so, um, the only things I really dislike about this car are, um, oh, sh oh yeah, so it's got a, a collision detection board in, which is a bit on the annoying side, because it constantly thinks we're going to crash or not. Um, so, uh, it also has a, uh, a speed warning, so um, it will beep at you and tell you off for speeding. We had to turn it off within a few minutes because uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm assuming it needs a software update, but um, it never knows what mode we're actually on and it gets the speed limits wrong most of the time. So uh, I'll be doing um, 60 70 miles an hour on a dual carriage, carriageway mode, which is 70 miles an hour, and it will it'll be turning me off because it thinks it's a 30 mile an hour road. And then you'll be on a 30 mile an hour road and it says it's a 20, you go on a 40 or 50 mile an hour road and it thinks it's a 30 road and it's constantly, constantly turning you off. So um, we turn that off within about five minutes of picking the car up. Um, ironically, the, uh, the weird thing is the sat nav doesn't talk to whichever part of the computer it is that deals with the um, speed here on the dashboard. 
So um, the mode I'm on here is 60 miles an hour, but on the dashboard, it, it actually doesn't know. But on, on these roads where it gets the speed more, so like again, um, it says it's a uh, 20 mile an hour mode when it's a 30 and it's telling me off. On the sat nav, it will be correct. So it will say 30 miles an hour on the sat nav, but 20 miles an hour on the dashboard, and telling me off for speeding, which is bizarre. It's um, uh, not what I would have expected for the, a brand new car. Uh, the other thing we had to turn off was the um, it has like a lane detection system. So um, if you start to drift over to the next lane, it will it will flash and tell you off as well. Um, but we found that to just be extremely oversensitive. And just driving down uh, in a straight line, it, it, it was going off. So uh, we turned that off as well. Um, yeah, the biggest uh, biggest dislike with the car really, as will be with virtually any electric car for the time being, is the the range. Um, from a full charge in normal mode, this car has a 143 mile range, um, which is not not much, or, for, or for 146 I think actually. Um, in economy mode it goes up to about 160, but uh, you never get the full range anyway, because that's assuming that there's, there's zero, um, uh, you're not using the, the, the blower at all, you're not using the radio, a any little thing you use is going to drain the battery that bit quicker so uh, yeah the range isn't great and you never get quite what it says anyway yeah so in conclusion um i'm, I'm really blown away by this car i wasn't sold with electric vehicles at all to be honest but um actually having this now um i'm, I'm really really pleased with it um it, it's fine if you uh you don't do a huge amount of mileage um but for, for general just day-to-day -day driving if you're sort of in and around town it's, it's absolutely perfect um, the range would be an issue if you want to go somewhere, obviously long distance, but um, as long as you can find a, uh, a garage or supermarket or somewhere with a fast charge pool, they actually charge up to 80% charge in about 45 minutes. So um, say if we were going to take this to Cornwall, we would have to work out where our stops are going to be, but um, you would, we would pull up every sort of 100 miles or so, have a 45 minute break, have a, have a coffee and a croissant or something while we're um, charging it up. So that's actually not too bad, that makes it a lot more practical. Um, plugging it in with a proper BP pulse charger, like the one we've had fitted to our house, it charges up in about three, four hours, uh, which isn't too bad. So we normally, uh, once we're done for the day and the charge is running low, we just get home, plug it in and then leave it till the next morning. You can leave them plugged in because they, they, they stop charging once the battery's full. So uh, it doesn't overload, it doesn't damage the battery or anything, you can just plug it in and leave it. Um, if you was to plug it into a regular plug socket so that you run an extension lead out then it takes I think about eight hours or so to charge but um, I don't really know what you would do if you uh, don't have a driveway or the ability to charge park one next to your house and charge it so if you lived in a flat or something like that I imagine it'd be a nightmare um, so yeah I, I wouldn't recommend it really if you was in a flat unless you have somewhere with its own parking area um, and maybe if the, whoever owns the parking area can put in a charging point then you may be okay but uh, other than that, unless you've got proper parking at your own, own home, I don't really know how you would get about charging it. Um, unless you literally went to supermarkets and charged it there, because most supermarkets now have charging points, or at least they do down south. But um, yeah, I would definitely recommend it to anyone that's after uh, um, an electric car. These retail for about, um, I think on the road price, was about 28,000 after you take off the two and a half thousand pounds um, uh, plug-in grant. So um, I said that they're quite expensive, but I think a lot of the electric vehicles are quite pricey. So uh, for the size of the car, it's certainly a practical family SUV. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd thoroughly recommend it. It's a lovely car. Nice to drive, um, pulls like a train. And uh, yeah, for your day-to-day -day driving, you can more or less forget that it's an electric car and uh, just enjoy it. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that video. Um, like and subscribe as always. Um, if you are inter interested in this car, we are going to do a few more videos on it. So we will do an to 60 test. Um, we're going to do a, obviously a sound test, which would be interesting. And uh, yeah, just, just generally have a few more videos coming. So uh, keep watching. Uh, like and subscribe, as I said, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Uh, see you later.